How are you doing this? Look to your left. Your other left? my best friend. She a real bad bitch, got her own money. She don't need no nig on the dance floor. She had two, three drinks, now she twerking. She throw it out and come back in. That's my best friend. She a real bad bitch, drive her own car. She don't need no lift in a strip club. No, my girl gon' tip, now she twerking. She throw it out and come back in. Beat, beat, test. Is that my bestie in a Pelicano and several others have been indicted on 112 counts for racketeering, illegal wiretapping, and illegally obtaining confidential information. News about Amber Heard and her journey to clear her name. Well, by the looks of it, Amber is obviously going to have a long, bumpy ride as a new interview hints that Adam Waldman is exposing Amber Heard with the help of a private investigator who once worked for her. Yep, Waldman is back at it and it seems like... I want you in the worst way. No, Roni, sex with you would be in the worst way. We'll play um, the entirety of. All right, any objection to 582? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 582 in evidence. How you doing, Rudy? Well, put your fucking cigarettes out on someone else. You fucking have consequences for your actions. That's it. Shut up, fat ass. Yeah, you got me there. Hey! Are you crazy? I employed 2,500 people in this town. Taxes to provide your salary. Get a real job. And I'm more than you bargained for. And he used intimidation to do it. If you want me to be myself and threaten them, then I'll no, do that. No, I don't want you to threaten. Well, then how do you do it unless you threaten somebody? That's the way everybody fucking moves for me when I threaten their fucking lives. It also showed that the Los Angeles legal system that a lot of these lawyers were cheating to win cases. Transsexual um, in his car. It was a spring day in 1997, and... A year to the day later, she's dead. A colleague of mine who I brought on to help report it, Johnny Wendell, I don't know if you know Johnny Angel, local uh, journalist and radio guy. Uh, we went out and, you know, tried, tried to doorstep her family. They weren't talking you know, out in Torrance or something like that. And then I just got with Paul Baresi, a um, fixer, a la, like, you know, Ray Donovan dirtied up 10 squared. And he's also a private investigator now. He got his license. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And, you know, Paul just led me right to the people that would know. Paul is kind of like an entree into sort of the L.A. underbelly then. I mean, I've dealt oh, with absolutely. him as well. He's a shame. I mean, this guy's great. I mean, this guy has worked Michael Jackson, you know, everything. And what he does is he plays both ends against the middle. <laughs> I know. I've interviewed him. Yeah. You didn't testify at trial, but you know what I mean. You were definitely yeah. a witness and you were a player in all of this. And people who went against her are getting harassed, a bunch of them, and you know, pretty severely in a variety of complex and simple ways. You know, and, and I just wonder if um, somehow that's related, because I think she's got beef with you. You just said that people who, who, were, who sided with Johnny, uh, are going, um, people are going after those people from Amber's side in a variety of different ways. That, that's a very eloquent way of putting it. I say it in, I said in ways simple and complex. I, complex, I mean, some of it is very elaborate, you know, and some of it is very expensive, and some of it is breaking, or, or uh, what do you call it, vandalism property. Yeah, so it's, um, it's, not, it's not just me? Who else is it? It's not random, it's not random, and it's in ways simple and complex, and so it's, it's, um, it's several people you know, and I can't say, I, I can't even say it's all connected, but I'm not a huge believer in coincidences, and these people are connected by virtue of having been helpful witnesses. And they're, they're people who she's got a particular grudge against. Am I one, am I one of them? I, well, I, well, I, I would think she has a grudge against you. I, you know, I think you should tell your story. I do.
What is this? I don't expect you to understand, Jack. It's, it's like a game. She was into it. Oh, she was into it. I pulled on the collar and I, I guess I, I guess I, I pulled too hard. You've done a very thorough job. I just think that I'll take it from here. Goodbye. I think I'm finally ready for the front page. An article. I found a stack of missing persons cases that no one's talking about. There's similarities between them all. This city is being attacked and no one seems to care. Kind of makes you wish the red blue blur wasn't sitting down on the job. I think that these people were attacked by the same criminal. Now we can be the first to break this story. We can warn the people of Metropolis. I can't print this. You need to print it. No, they're called facts, Clark, and you don't have any. You don't care about these victims? You're sweeping this under the rug. Great. Another conspiracy theory, because I love those. Look closely. You will not find a web of lies behind this facade. That would be your department. And it's a gritty portrait of power in Hollywood. He just wants this woman totally discredited, right? Absolutely. Well, doesn't, wouldn't the drugs help, help that too? The drugs would help. What's an example of how Pelicano would operate? The first one that comes to mind is the Chris Rock recording. Hey, buddy. Hey. How you doing? Uh, I'm all right. Chris Rock, he was married at the time, and he was at the Four Seasons with a friend, and they ended up picking up two women, and he ended up sleeping with one of them. This woman is now claiming to have Chris Rock's baby. She's also alleging that he forced himself on her. Steven called me this morning. Yeah? Uh, something, the, fi the, the file. Oh, I, no, I want to hear uh, so I... Anthony starts off by telling him that he has gotten the police report. I'm going to read this to you. I'm not supposed to have this thing. Do you understand that? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to have this thing, but okay, I got so it. Nobody knows. See, any, any rape victim is, is, is confident. Me for what? But... I mean, look around us, man. There's nothing here but stuff. If you want to change, then you better come out with something better than all this. Some of us actually work for a living. The night that this, uh, the night that the cigarette was put out on station, Lopez, it would have been, my best guess is it would have been a Wednesday night because there were so many models in the club. And generally speaking, the models were there for the punk rock pajama party. It was after hours and, uh, you know, Kate was on the dance floor dancing with, uh, Stacey Lee Lopez. Johnny was loaded. Johnny, I don't know what he was on. He was very drunk. I don't know what drugs he took that night. But he became very irate at the fact that Stacy was, I guess, kind of getting a little bit close to Kate, almost like a dirty dancing kind of thing. Johnny flew off into a rage, and he ran out into the dance floor, and he pushed Kate out of the way, and he grabbed Stacy Lee Lopez by her hair, and he put a cigarette out on her head. Paul Schindler interesting enough, was the one that ran in there and pulled Stacy Lee Lopez away from him. He took Stacy. He escorted her out of the club. Um, and I can't remember who he kind of like turned her over to, but he made sure she was okay. When Paul Schindler came back into the club, Johnny flew off in a rage towards Paul Schindler. And he started yelling and screaming at Paul Schindler, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, you ever do that again. And he started punching holes in the walls in the downstairs corridor and in the private room. Um, the next day, it was early that morning when Sal and Seven, Seven McDonald, were terrified that Paul was going to come back and harm somebody at the club. Paul was very upset at the fact that Johnny had threatened to kill him. But at the same time, Paul Schindler would have never done anything to anybody there. He loved Johnny. Like, he was obsessed with Johnny. Um, right away, they were trying to, Seven and Sal were trying to figure out how to make this little story go away. 
The last thing anybody wanted was the big modeling agencies to know or the bookers to find out that this happened because that would have dried up the pool of models to come hang out at the club. You know, one of the first people that the attorneys instructed me to contact was a former Viper Room employee named Richard Albertini. (laughs) Right. And they said, look, this guy's been calling us. This guy's been hounding us. You got to go talk to him. I think he's got some good stuff. Okay, so I get a hold of Richie Albertini uh, by by way of Facebook, and uh, and I introduce myself. I let him know what's up, what I'm trying to do, and he proceeds to tell me about how Johnny Depp is a a Satanist. He's a uh, he's responsible for the death of his ex business partner Anthony Fox. He's responsible for the death of River Phoenix. He put a cigarette out on the dance floor on a woman's forehead. He beat up Kate Moss, and he's just going on and on and on and on. I went back to the attorneys. I said, look, this guy is talking through his rear end. They said, well, we want you to check it out nonetheless. I said, okay. People want to hear the dirt. They want to know the dirt. Now, a celebrity, they stand to lose reputation, career, livelihood if a scandal gets out. And let me use Eddie Murphy as an example. Okay. And this is how I came to meet Pelicano. I I came to meet Anthony Pelicano, who was a Hollywood fixer, private detective, who worked with lawyers that that needed fires to be put out. I call it, that's, that's how I characterize it, putting out fires for celebrities who get themselves into binds, and they're usually sexually based. Mm. So this particular problem that Eddie Murphy got into involved transvestites. His alleged uh, proclivities to transvestites all right, and I'm not going to say one way or another if it's true or not true, but he got himself into some trouble. You remember when he picked up that uh, transvestite in Hollywood back in the early 90s and that yeah, all the tabloids, yeah, and every transvestite came out of the woodwork and alleged they had some sexual dalliance with Eddie Murphy. Do you remember that? I, absolutely. The Hawaiian girl was the one he got the, the first one. She was Samoan. So Samoan. you're not too young. You're not too young <laughs> to remember that. No, no, I remember you. Yeah. All right. So the mission was there was a mission that required my unique talent, and that was to round up all these transvestites alleging they had sex with Eddie Murphy and helping them all to see their way clear to recanting their story. Well, how do you do that? Well, first, you got to find them. You got to know where they are. You got to know where they hang out. And it's always good that they know you. And I was like I said, I was pretty well known in the gay world because of my reputation, you know, playgirl, producing film, et cetera. They, uh, they knew who I was. So when I went knocking on their door, they invited me in and I got, uh, there were seven of them. I got six of them to the best of my recollection to re to recant their story with the exception of the Samoan girl, girl, Zawali was her name, uh, had his own Zawali. She, she wouldn't budge. And unfortunately she ended up falling to her death from the roof of her, of her apartment uh, building. Yeah. If I recall, a year, she was almost locked a out year of to the day, almost a year to the day after uh, she was arrested with Eddie Murphy. Now I didn't have a hand in it. Although there are many in the transvestite world that still think I did. But if, if I did have a hand in it, I wouldn't be telling you anyway, but well, were you uh, ever contacted by the police and questioned about that? I'm not. I, I'm not at liberty to discuss any of that. Okay. And the story was that she was locked out of her apartment and she tried to climb in through a window and fell. Now, there's been many versions of of what happened. Uh, typically, she would go to a patio and swing over into a window, but the but the window had been latched, locked. Uh, because uh, it, it wasn't working correctly. So the, 
the landlord locked it permanently. So consequently, she had to go up to the roof and then try to uh, shimmy down a towel from the roof into the window. And uh, in doing so, it was something to do with the momentum, with the trying to swing into the window. The towel slipped and she fell to her death. Because this is something she did all the time? That's how she would enter her apartment through a window? Well, whenever she left her keys. Okay. And so now, did you look into this to find out what, to find out what happened? Well, anybody, you know, the coroner report is public record. Anybody can go and find out what happened. The, the police report ruled it a, as a uh, Accident. accidental death. And a lot of the stuff is edited out. The, the best story is the truth. So what happened was after I did the story with Chris White in the Daily Mail, I got an email from Adam Waldman who said, I really appreciate you coming clean because the story said what we've already discussed that I couldn't find anything bad about Johnny. He said, I appreciate and Johnny appreciates you coming clean as if I was holding something, something back. And then I, we eventually spoke on the phone. I said, look, I said, Mr. Waldman, um, it wasn't about coming clean. It's, it was just the truth. And that's, that's how it all went down. So from there, we developed a, a rapport and I shared with him some of the extraordinary historical documents, which I know you want to talk about later. Right. With him. And he found that fascinating. And I said, in fact, there are some documents I found that are so enlightening that the public has never heard about that. I don't think even Johnny knew about it. And that's, that was fascinating. So that's the basis of our, of our relationship. And, uh, we have, we have become friends, you know. He always used the excuse that he can't get sober because, uh, when he goes to meetings, everybody approaches him. As a matter of fact, big Ray O'Hagan, uh, very good friend of mine. Well, missing, disappeared. Uh, Big Ray O'Hagan was Johnny Depp's sponsor in Alcoholics Anonymous. Interesting. And so when that happened, um, they did they blame it on his jealousy or did they blame it? Oh, it was definitely, it was his jealousy. Well, actually, it was a little bit of both. It was the jealousy combined with being fueled by drugs and alcohol. Right. Did you ever hear anyone talk about Stacy after that? Just Paul Schindler and his girlfriend Nina. But no, she never came back around. Do you know the full name of Nina? God, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I, I remember what she looks like. About six feet tall, long blonde, very curly hair, freckles, uh, very American, uh, like girl next door type. What did Stacy Lee Lopez look like? Long black hair, very thin, pale, tall. And how old was she then? <sighs> I don't believe either one of them was 21. I, I don't recall exactly, though. Right, and so this was in the 1990s? Yes. And so this was the only... And you said you haven't seen other incidents of him be violent to women, but just that alone, the cigarette put on her head and pulling her hair. Yeah, I seen fights. I seen, I seen fights. I seen arguments. You know, I seen yelling and screaming. I seen threats. But uh, I, to the best of my recollection, uh, I don't think I ever seen him hit another woman. I seen him hit men. I seen him, like I said, I seen him go off on, on a. Um, Bruce uh, Corkum. I know for sure I seen him get violent towards Paul Schindler, and I know for sure I've seen him sick bouncers on people. So when Bruce Corkum mentioned the cups thrown at him, did you see that? I, I don't. I don't. When he said it, it's. Uh, did I witness a specific event? No. Had I seen Johnny throw shit at him? Absolutely. Johnny used to talk about him being an idiot. Okay, so you saw that throw items at oh, yeah. Corkum, his assistant? Yes, 
his stand-in, who but also acted as assistant. Understood. And again, I'll, I'll remind you, in that video of everybody leaving the club that night, where Paul Schindler is the guy out at the front with the purple suit, Bruce Corkum is the guy with the pompadour haircut and the beige jacket, and I think he was wearing jeans. Kind of like a James Dean kind of looking guy. It seems like Johnny Depp's former lawyer has all hands on deck to put Heard in her proper place. Keep watching and let's hear the juicy details. Paul Barassi, a U.S. private investigator, reportedly said in an interview with a media site that Amber Heard's attorneys engaged him to learn negative stuff about her ex-husband Johnny Depp. This is only the tip of the iceberg because there's more. The PI, who supported Depp, claimed that everyone who praised Depp had actually said many ugly and terrible things against Heard. With certainty that I spoke with a great number of people and they all said Johnny was a sweetheart, that he was a... In the course of the interview, he responded to a question about the task he was given by Heard's attorneys. Barrissey went into the details and stated, Yeah, I was supposed to find uh, instances of bad conduct from the past uh, in accordance with what Amber alleged, primarily find other women who were abused by Johnny. Barrissey didn't hesitate and exposed Amber some more as he answered the questions one after the other. Paul narrated how Heard supposedly hired her way back in 2019 with the quest of digging up bad stuff about Johnny only to report without a tiny bit of dirt. So um, you watched Depp be violent with Stacey Lopez, Kate, because of that night pushing her away, Paul Schindler and Bruce Corkum. Yeah, oh, and just unnamed uh, customers. I wouldn't know the names of the customers, but just people that happened to be in the club that he would get a bad vibe about, and he would go after them. Oh, okay. And he would use other people? To get yeah, he, he would usually start the fight. He would start by talking shit and just talking nonsense. He might start throwing his arms around, and then somebody like Paul Schindler would jump on the person and drag him outside. Right, so he was used to also using other people. Did you oh, yeah. hear anything about him being violent to his um, domestic partners? Uh, again, I knew there were fights. Um, so oh, fights okay. as in... Arguments, yelling. screaming, yelling, yeah. What are we going to do with Johnny? He's got to go to rehab. I mean, rehab was like from day one. From probably the first. Remember our first conversation with respect to William Hazlitt. If you want to create an unfavorable impression, it's not even necessary that what is said be true. You can damage someone just by saying it. And there's an open case now in South Carolina for criminal threats and harassment. That's number one that I have to fight. Number two, a ridiculous uh, TRO against me which is also false, claiming that uh, Johnny hired me to turn over all my findings to, to you. The reality is anybody in the world, and you know this better than I do, anybody can file a police report about anything against them. Well, that's true. That's kind of like the way our, you know, that's the way our republic works. Do you know how many crimes have been committed against me? Most of them I just ignore defamation, slander, cyberbullying, whatever. All this stuff, it only matters if it matters. I thought maybe we could uh, uh, fuse what you got with what I got, and then that would even be more... Well, you have to understand, you have to understand, I fought this case for Johnny, and you have probably some inkling of how much more work I put into it. Six years that I did it for free. I mean, the case is one, you know? I'm oh, yeah, no, I... I <laughs> and I'm here for you, and I always want to help you. One other thought. Richie Albertini looks to me like I don't have any money at all. It doesn't look to me like he has a job. No, no, he's homeless, toothless. What's rare? A pen that works in this place? I heard about your date last night. Ended with a thud. Sorry I didn't get your phone call till it was all over. I wasn't on a date, Smallville. I was deep undercover on a dinner with a psychopath. Sounds like your type. Lois, why didn't you tell me you're working on a story? If I told you my secret, it would have put you in harm's way. It was for your own safety. Thanks for looking out for me. You're welcome. Hey, Lois. By any chance, did you take a peek at today's front page? You certainly did, Jimmy Olsen. I have to say that I've underestimated you. 
As hard as it is to believe, I was saved now twice in two days. Without a doubt, I'm officially a true believer in this red and blue super dude. Hey, Jimmy. Hey. Oh, hey, guys. Good job. Word from above, the mayor is going to announce the new fire chief at 10 a.m. My days of covering Yonner press conferences are all but over. Because I have a new mission in life. I didn't realize you had an old one. I'm going to use my expert tracking skills and find this camera shy superhero. Really? Good luck with that. Mark my words, Clark Kent. I won't stop until I land the first worldwide exclusive interview. Watch me. I want to be part of the whole celebrity culture. Jalee was his girlfriend. Now, why did Paul Baresi and how did Paul Baresi get her name? Being a stripper, she used to bring home some of these girls. She brought home this girl named Donna. Donna was, she was drop dead gorgeous. She was from Kentucky. She talked back, she was from Kentucky. And she was hot. She was very outgoing and um, she was staying with us. And I didn't even know it, but she had her mind determined before she even asked me. She had her mind made up that she was gonna meet Johnny Depp and she was gonna sleep with him. And she did. Uh, she didn't know that I could introduce her. She, all she said is, Richie, can I come to the club one night? She said, sure. She comes to the club. What do you know? Within minutes, she knows Johnny Depp. And they're sitting downstairs. They're in the bar. They're getting to know each other. Blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, she's fucking around with Johnny. Now, she starts using drugs. And um, she was drinking a lot before I even introduced her to Johnny. And she was annoying. And she was annoying him. And she was only in town. She was only around for about three weeks. And what really sent her into a fruit loop was, you know, she slept with a lot of a lot of Johnny's friends. Um, she's the one that had to give, if she wanted to get near Johnny that night, if she wanted to get into the private room, she had to give Big Ed Shaw a blowjob. And she was doing all this shit because she was like an obsessed fan. And the incident that stopped her from coming to the club, and it was a big incident. And, you know, it was bad. And this is why Ed Shaw is going to freak out. But I don't care. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. I even remember the conversation. She was drunk. Johnny was using. Johnny was kind of done with her. There was another girl he was cruising up to. And Donna was being kind of jealous. Because she thought that because she was sleeping with Johnny and because she was giving blowjobs to his friends, she thought that she was going to be like in with Johnny and he was going to take her and he was going to make her a big supermodel. I mean, she was that good looking is what I'm getting at. This girl should not have been tripping. She, she, she had that model look at the time. So it was one night after hours and there, there was all kinds of drugs and alcohol. And I don't even remember who all was there. I know Tommy Lee was there. I know Paul Schindler was there. Uh, I know Seven McDonald was there. I know Sal Jenko was there. Everybody, nobody that was there would ever talk. And she was getting jealous. It was her getting jealous. And she was like saying, to, I remember even her word. She said, well, Johnny, you're from Kentucky and I'm from Kentucky. And when she said that, he flipped the fuck out and he pushed her and he called Big Ed Shaw over and Big Ed Shaw fucking mangled her up. I threw her out of the club. She still lived with me. She was, so, I'm like, holy fuck. So, later on that night, I go home. She's all bruised up. She's telling me that she had to have sex with, with Ed, and I don't even remember who else, maybe Josh Richman. Um, but this is what was going on. And it was like, this is a girl that got abused. 
not in a relationship with Johnny, just manipulated with, by Johnny, or I'm not even going to say that, just obsessed with Johnny, that she was willing to do anything just to meet him. And it, when he was done with her, he was done with her. And her name was Donna. The fighting happening, um, Johnny screaming, and a commotion. Um, we didn't come out of our trailer. Uh, and then the quieting down and everyone being like, oh, it's okay. The bodyguards, I heard them running over there. Um, and then the next morning when we got up, the group was talking about what had happened that night. And then I kind of left that conversation and went to the trailer to check on Amber. And um, I saw the completely torn apart trailer um, Johnny was apologizing for what he had done and he was instructing his bodyguards to just pay it off. Let's just take care of it. And um, I stayed with Amber and she was really shaken up. The next day, can you describe for me what the trailer where Amber and Johnny were staying looked like? Uh, the inside was in shambles. I remember seeing a light hanging off the wall. There was broken stuff everywhere. Um, dishes, it looked like, or not dishes, like the wood was broken. Things were hanging off the wall. Um, it was in shambles on the inside. Um, you I don't. You, you said you had a rubber on it, brother. I had a rubber on. I probably took it off right when I was getting ready to come. Probably came on her ass, if, you know. So, you gotta change your story now. We have somebody with means and power who's able to employ somebody like Anthony Pelicano, playing the system to their own benefit. It's a total imbalance of power. The wonderful thing about this is that the police department didn't believe her. I'm just, once, you know, you're accused of rape, it's just fucked. You just fuck. I know, that's why I want to blacken this girl up totally. You are just so, you understand? Fuck. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I want to make her out to be a lying scumbag, yeah. manipulating cocksucker. That's what I'm... Mm. I'll have to go up and see a John Travolta poster. Great idea. Standard Vegas striptease is seven minutes long. The woman should remove her top at the four minute mark. At six minutes, she should be naked, with the exception of an optional prop. The beginner's mistake is to get naked too fast, thinking that's what the audience is there for. It's not. Sex, it's biology. Sex appeal? is marketing. It's not the naked body that's exciting. It's a possibility. That's your side. All right, you stay on that side. This is my side. There's a, no need for overlap. 5% have to be minority contractors. It's in the city charter now. Run them through Archer Construction. Your wife's company? Women are minorities, right? I'll look into it. That was one of your father's favorite phrases. May he rest in peace. Joey, no disrespect intended. I love Diane John. But he would have never even dreamed of something as big as this airport thing. Ain't this one of our broads? The one that was with Senator Sullivan? Yeah, in half of Washington. She's hot. Not anymore. David Corliss whacked her. Too bad. She was a nice girl. Do anything for a dollar. You're gonna need two guys. What do you think? Um, magic act? Better get someone to take the jacket. Good for you. Don't start. 
whatever kind of day you think you've had. Trust me, I've had it in spades. Oh, what happened? The jet late leaving Paris? The beluga, not the right temperature. It's very, very funny. Yeah. You might want to save the song and dance routine for the shareholders when you try to explain to them a uh, sketchy deal with China. It's terrible. So that's what got you out of bed before the dinner bell. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Barely had time to change clothes, actually. I can tell. Black on black. That's hard to pull off. Well, it's easier than you think. Green Arrow. Yeah. I just live next door. Bye, Stevie. Right now I have an appointment coming over. You and your appointment. <laughs> well, I'm going to give it one more shot. Try and talk to Janice again. Good luck. Thanks. Bye. My appointment. <laughs>